you know, gold has been in a long consolidation phase. So we had that big run from the COVID lows in 2020 all the way up to the all time highs. And then since then, you've been just going sideways to lower, sideways to lower, literally for, you know, over a year now. Um, what I'm focusing in on is a pattern formation, an inverse head and shoulders here, which is a bullish pattern formation. Now, it only triggers when this trend line gets broken to the upside. But if it does trigger or when it does trigger, you're looking at upside on the GLD to at least 200, uh, maybe even a little bit above it. So, I mean, that would put gold at new all time highs in the short term here if that did play out. So I'm keeping a close eye on that. In terms of the downside, I wouldn't want to see this lower trend line break. As long as that trend line holds, I think gold is in a good position here. It might consolidate for another couple months, but ultimately when it breaks out, that's where you get your next leg up. And again, I, I think it's important to recognize whether or not we see a sell off on the Fed or whether it pops on the Fed. That's just an interim short term reaction. You have to just as a gold investor, if you're a long term gold investor, you just have to continue to look at the facts, which are the money printing is continuing. China continues to go on this path of saying the digital you want. They want the digital digital you want to be the new global reserve currency, which will ultimately cause downward pressure on the dollar. That's also inflationary uh, and good for gold. So all of these factors that are going to play out over the next two, five, 10 years will will and should drive up gold's price. Right. So important to remember to think long term, but very difficult to do. Yeah. So for you, I remember you have a 2100 price target for gold in 2021. Are we still looking like we're on track to see that by the end of the year? Yes. Uh, so uh, so I believe so. Um, it might come towards the end of the year, maybe even early next year. It's so tough to figure out the timing mm -hmm. on these things. But really what I'm following is that neckline head and shoulder, inverse head and shoulder break. Once that happens, it should be a, a pretty sharp move to the upside. Um, and again, I think November, December would be when that would happen if it's going to happen. Institutional money flow um, and algorithms are set up to try to push investors to the limits um, and get them to exit their positions or enter short positions or long positions and get them on the wrong side of the market. And they do this because that's how they make their money. So if you look at the Goldman Sachs trading desk or any of these other trading desks at hedge funds, their goal is to push people to a level where they think something is happening. They jump on that side and then they'll, the institutions will reverse that trade and make them wrong. Ultimately, they'll exit the trade for a loss. So when you look at a major trend line, and you see a close below, you have to understand that could be a fake out. Now, what I found is that if you get a secondary close below that, that breakdown level, all right, that's where it's unlikely at that point to be a fake out. Generally, I've been more cautious on silver. So you guys know, you know, I've talked gold up saying, you know, six, 12 months out, I have my gold price target end of year out there, very bullish. Silver, I've been much more neutral on, maybe even slightly bearish. And it's kind of showing itself as of why, and I'll explain it here. So basically silver is partially a store of safety, which is you know why it does move with gold somewhat, but it also has an industrial component to it. So you've gotten in a position now over the last couple months where people are starting to realize that they're, the economy's robust surge right now is because people saved money during COVID, the lockdown, they're spending it now, but once they spend and go through that money they saved, what is the normalized level? Is it going to drop back down? And if it drops back down and people don't have as much money, is then there less industrial demand on the industrial side for silver um, out there? And that I think is why you're seeing a silver underperform with gold and not bounce the same way gold has bounced recently. And I also think that the Delta variant plays into that same factor too. We don't know if there is going to be an added slowdown in the economy because of the Delta variant, which again would then influence the industrial side of the silver component. That's really interesting. So people do maybe forget that silver has those two sides, the precious and industrial. So for you right now, would you say it's that industrial side that is driving the price more and that it's keeping it a little bit suppressed? Yeah, for sure. And, and even with gold, I mean, it's not like gold has had the biggest rally in the world anyway. So it's not like gold is super strong. So if you take something that's, you know, lukewarm to slightly positive like gold, and then if you matched it up with silver and you said, okay, so it, the, 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 
the savings, the the in investment portion from the safety trade of silver is lukewarm, and then you throw in the industrial weakness, it kind of tips the scale to slightly lower. And I think that's what you're seeing. Now, in all fairness, down the line, as inflation continues to show itself, which I believe it will, it's not going to go back to 2% like the Fed thinks, silver will eventually regain steam and break higher. But you just got to go through this little period of consolidation and small pullbacks until then. Do you have a price outlook for silver in 2021? Wow, that's a tough one. I think, I think, a- yeah, I mean, I think by the end of this year, you'll see it here or a little bit lower. I don't know how much lower, but then I think in 2022 is when it starts to regain its power and power to the upside. So, so for me, for example, I'm, I don't have any, you know, I haven't bought any silver recently as a swing trade or anything like that. But towards the end of the year, if it comes in a little bit more, I will absolutely um look to accumulate and then look for a bigger move up in 2022. yeah fair enough and we do need somebody who's going to give us a little bit of a lower price outlook versus the very high ones that i often get for silver it's important to know that like i always view myself as being not necessarily a bull or a bear on anything i really just focus in on the charts and and generally i'm a near-term trader so three to six months out and i just go with what the charts are telling me it's not a matter of my my gut or my bias honestly those are horrible so if i went with my gut reaction to things i'd be wrong most of the time the charts are really where the pure you know non-emotional reaction is or the re- the real reality is and that's really what i try to go by where are you seeing other opportunities in the near, ter- near term now that we've talked about some of the metals yeah so um so gold continues to be something i'm interested in. gdx um definitely interested in that um you know I'm, I'm i'm short the overall equity markets right now the s p and the nasdaq 100 going to be really interesting with all these earnings that are coming out over the next week or so with the big tech players um and then and then i've been accumulating and this might be a horrible situation and, and really not smart of me but the charts right now on a lot of these chinese stocks which have just been clobbered so much more than even i thought i have been accumulating Accumulating them, I accumulated a little bit more today. I've been doing it kind of with just dipping my pinky toe in the water type thing because it is such a scary situation. But but again, I try to just focus in on the charts, and the charts are saying, all right, buy best of breed right now, the Alibabas, the Baidu's, and, and just kind of inch in a little bit and see if you get a technical bounce. All right, and would that though connected to those Chinese stocks? Would that be related to a COVID recovery over there? Yeah. It, so with, with the Chinese stocks, I mean, the Chinese government is just hammering with with new regulation and fines and restrictions. Their companies. I, it really seems like the Chinese government had this hundred year anniversary, and they must have made this big plan for kind of change, and they're just trying to reestablish themselves as king of the hill, essentially. As, as maybe some of these companies were getting a little too powerful 